Hey guys, it's Shane. Welcome back down to the workshop. Uh, today's video is a scabbard. We're going to be making a leather scabbard for this. Now this cookery I made recently as a commission for somebody. Now all I need to do is add a leather scabbard to it. Now if you're uh, new here, please hit the uh, subscribe button and the bell button. It'll alert you when I go live with new stuff. And for any of you guys who have seen my videos before, you know if you need any questions or you want me to cover something in more depth or view, leave a comment below. Let's just jump into it, shall we? So in this video, we're going to be using real leather. Now this is two mil veg tan. Uh, I've had it quite a while. Now these are just scrap pieces, but I should be able to knock up a scabbard for this. Okay, the other option of doing this is with false leather, with this stuff. Now, uh, all you would do with this is literally have a layer of this, and then maybe put a layer of two mil craft foam, and then another layer on the back of this. That's exactly how this is. Now this is false leather with two mil craft foam on the inside and then another layer of fo uh, leather over the top. We still do the stitching exactly the same, all the studding is exactly the same. It's okay, it works, but it's not the best. Real leather is still the best and that's what we're going to do. So we need a two pieces to this scabbard. Uh, we need a back piece and then we need a top piece. Now with these pieces here, I don't actually have enough to go right over the tip to this part here now that's fine because I can do an open tip so what I want to do is literally bring that right up to here now that V I'm going to put into this side so there okay so the tip is still going to be exposed and then we're going to this side will be stitched as well as all this but this side will be open and then there'll be a catch boom over the top there or I could do it, this side could be completely stitched, and that piece, and then a catch over that side. Depends on how you want to do it. Then we also need to do a top toggle. So that would end there. This would be something that we could fold over uh, and use to hang on to our belt. All right, so that's what we're going to do first. So first off, we're going to use this piece and we're going to mark out. Now I can't go straight to this edge because I need a bit of extra for the leather to hold on to. So if I take my pen, uh, now I don't want to be going in too, leaving too much. So let's give a centimeter and a half. Right. So that will be where our foot leather bends down and gets clamped in, okay? So we've got a little bit of work there. <clears throat> now, what I need to do then, put the back of the blade onto there, and then just basically draw your blade. Like so. Now, we know from there we need at least two centimeters all the way around. So we need to put that on as well. So that is our work area. All this is our work area. And then what we would do is, like I said, this is going to be more of a tactical thing. So rather than waste all this, I don't have enough here to go all the way over. So what I'm thinking of doing is going butt up to there, which is going to expose just a little bit of this. So I'm going to... put a line there so I know I don't have to use this part that's going to be the bottom so what I'm doing now is I need to shape this top piece now veg tan is very stiff very rigid however if you wet it and soak it 
it becomes bendy and pliable. And when it dries out, it'll be like well, you've heat sealed foam. It will remain in that shape and harden. So we're just soaking it just enough that I can bend it. Not too much, because otherwise we've got to dry the damn thing out. So you can see where I've been. This bit's dry, where this bit's been soaked. Okay, it's started to come through now, look. Which is what we want. Now, luckily, our weapon is waterproof, so we're okay. Now, we don't need the bottom for this. All I need is enough to go over the back and give me about, I would say, a good centimeter and then the same on this part here and then down give yourself a little bit of space you don't want too too tight too tight I want a bit of breathing room because I've got to put a layer of felt on the inside of this because the inside of veg tan is very rough and that will wear down our weapons protective coating so we need to put some soft material it doesn't have to be felt it could be uh, you know cotton or anything just line the inside <laughs> So, although it's not perfectly dry yet, it's still dry enough that it's holding its shape. So when we slide that in, like so, on there, yeah, that's going to be on here, like so. Now, we will be sewing this side and this side, and then all the way around here to about here. This will then be open and I'll probably cut it about here. So it's not, you're not gonna be able to pull it in and out without damaging it, you see? You see that slight movement? You see that? That's the bottom of this. Now that's gonna wear off. So what we do is we cut that section off and leave it open like all cookery daggers are because of this curve, okay? Once that's sewn on and that bit's sewn on, to about there, this is left open here. Now. What we do then to prevent this from falling out is put like a, a clip that goes over it. Now you can have two, if you wish, it's entirely up to you, or you could just have the one. Uh, but we'll see how we go. So what we're going to do now is mark this up and stamp this side. So if we stamp, well, we're not gonna stamp it, sorry. We're gonna line the inside of that with some felt or some softer material, and the same for this part here. Don't worry about the inside there, just this part, that because that's where the dagger is going to be going all the time. Okay? So here's our flat piece. This is going to be the back. All right, there's our pattern that we're going to need. So this is our work area. This is our work area. This is the pattern that we need to cover. But just for simplicity, just cut a section out the same as this. That's 
should be a perfect replica. Okay, now what that's going to do is going to protect the cover, the skin of the LARP weapon. So now we're going to glue that down. Because this is a piece of leather, while that's still drying, we've still got something to do with this. Okay, now this is a, an edge, and what we're going to do is we're going to smooth that off. Okay, now I cannot remember for the life of me what this tool is, but it's literally like a little groove. And all we're going to do is place it on the edge and just narrowly take that edge off, just skim it. So what we're going to do now is back onto this side. Now that's starting to stiffen up a bit, which is what we want. All right. So basically, look, if, if I tried to put that in there, it wouldn't go because of this section here. So that's why we need to keep this open, this back. All right. But what we need to do is line the inside of it. Yeah. So we take a bit of our cloth and we're going to line the inside. Obviously not that piece because I need a bit more. trim I wouldn't bother trimming any of this up yet because I don't know how much of it I'm going to be needing but it should be on that line there okay so that's going to go onto there like so and then we will chop that bit and then get that sewn on and then we will sew this leave this bit open okay right so we've got this covered we've got this covered now what I'm going to do is start this stitching off because then I can once I've got this line done and this side done I only need to sew that bit and then I can cut this open and then we're halfway there okay this is going to start drying very quickly now so line up these two ends make sure this top line is as smooth as you can get it now what you're going to do is one of these tools now again I can't remember the name of these I apologize but what it's got is like a little sharp edge not too sharp but uh, what it does this is adjustable 
so you'll turn this at like so and this moves in and out and you can set the width now I don't want it too wide because I need some of this height okay because of the thickness of this blade so I'm only going to go in from this edge inside maybe a few mil now I don't technically need the bottom width for this but this round section here goes flat against this edge okay and then all we do is drag and what it'll do is take a strip out of it like so yeah now you can use one of these wheels with sharp edges okay and to plan out where you're going that's fine but I prefer to use these which are like little spikes okay and what you would do is plant them inside that run and then bang now I don't have a proper leather mallet I only have these small mallets but make sure that underneath is nice and soft I have a cutting mat here so that's fine but I also need it to go through this okay so make sure it's lined up again so I want to go through the top into the bottom with this so give it a few love nudges like so and you get that nice little spiked hole now that is all level level all the way through okay so then we continue that all the way along Right, now that has been done all the way through there and all the way through there. As you can see, it then sharply bends down here. So we need to make sure we have enough of our dagger in there to be able to do that. So this is why we're doing it now okay so there you go it, you can see there's a bit of play there which is good that's what I want so I can go a little bit further on this straight line and then it sharply cuts down <laughs> The way I'm going to do this is traditional, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the stitch, there's a proper leather stitch using a needle at either end. So the way we do this, this is quite, it is very easy, it looks hard, but it's not. So this um, is treated uh, proper leather thread, I can't remember, again, I'm not a leathersmith, so <laughs> I don't know, so that should do it. Now take your needle, feed it through like always. Now take your needle, I'm not sure if you can pick this up. Now find your thread and actually feed your needle through the thread. Okay, and you get this hoop type thing. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah. Now keeping hold of this loose end, yeah, pull it through and then pull it both ends tight. Now that should hold. Okay, then we go to the other side. And we do the exact same thing with this needle. So feed it through your thread, 
pull it tight and then just pull it through there'll be a little bit of a bump there it is and it's nice and tight now you have a needle at both ends right okay so what we do line them up now if you're ever in doubt there's this tool here which is just like a spike okay now you can feed it through one and it's nice and loose now if you look through the light you can see your lines or you can just go through the back okay just to give it a bit more opening so I can now see ah there it is look so now them two are nicely joined all right so take that out and feed your line through both holes Okay, pull it level. Okay. Now, there'll be leather workers turning in their graves on me now. Right, so now we go to the next stitch. Feed it through. Don't pull too hard. And then you get the other needle that you haven't fed through. And that goes through the same hole. So the second hole, the one that you just come through and you go back out. So it's crossing over. Now that's done a stitch over this side and this side. And then you just pull it tight. Okay. And then you just continue all the way down.
Okay, so we've got all this line done. All right, now that's good. And that fits quite snug into there. I've just got to sew that bit and then we can start work on this bit. Once this bit's done, that's it. Most of this is actually finished. Now I need some more thread to finish this bit. So <clears throat> we have our basic shape to the scabbard. Okay, because we wet formed it, it stuck and it kept the shape. Now you'll notice I've only gone so far up on here. All right, like I said, with this finish, we want to last as long as possible. So I've left that open to allow us, because if you look, look how much you can see the blade sticking out there. It we won't be able to seal this and then use this for this scabbard. So to make it safe and to prevent wear on the blade, that slots in there. And then we're going to have a strip of leather that comes over here and then fastens, okay, holding that in place. The other thing we're going to put on is on the back we're going to be putting like a tube like this that will be stitched and studded on the back that a belt will be able to slide through. So you'll be able to help wear it on a belt sideways, yes, or you could literally, we're going to put another piece on the, on the head to allow you to hang it off the top of your belt. So that will be folded over like so. Yeah, so there will be like a, a loop on this side. Yeah, so you'll be able to hang it off your belt there, or there'll be a loop off this side, so the belt can go through that way as well. Now, that is all going to be in part two. So part one was literally just wet form in the top, stitching this back side here and here. Now the stitching, the saddle stitch has been done. This will all be cleaned up nice and neat. Once we're ready to finish it all off, before we start dyeing, we will brand these, uh, these edges to make them all nice and tidy. Okay, and same with this one. So, there we have it. The basic shape to our scabbard. Okay, so part one is done. The basic shape is all done. We wet formed the top and the bottom is nice and smooth. We did all the stitching on the back with the saddle stitch, which allows us to a nice, because we're leaving that open, leaves us a nice unrestricted scabbard. Okay, the inside has been felt lined to help with this, so it's not going to be take any damage. And uh, in part two, we'll be adding the vertical attachment so you can hang it off your belt, and then we'll be doing the horizontal one. So we can attach it to your belt that way. So you'll be able to hold it that way or that way. It's entirely up to you. But that will be in part two. So guys, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell button. I really appreciate it. It'll alert you when uh, I go live with new stuff. Also, if you have any questions about what I've done so far, if you need me to go over stuff, please leave a comment below and uh, I'll let you know uh, what's coming up next. Okay, guys, so thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've uh, enjoyed it, and uh, I shall see you on the next part. Cheers, guys.